MPs got to have their say on it. This is the best possible deal. And at any time over the last seven years, if we'd been offered this deal as a United Kingdom as the way forward, we would have bitten their arms off. Today's vote is likely to be the only one MPs get on the deal. And it was only on one part, the Stormont break, which would give the Northern Ireland Assembly a way to challenge new EU goods legislation. This Windsor framework is presented on the basis that it's to normalise relations with the EU. If that's the case, how likely is it that we're going to have pick a fight with them over the implementation of some EU law in Northern Ireland? The truth is, this is not a storm and break, it's a storm and fake. It should be rejected by this House. It doesn't protect the Union, it doesn't protect the democracy in Northern Ireland, and it will not get the Assembly back and running again. The Democratic Unionist Party had already declared they couldn't back the deal. What they're also refusing to do as yet, re-enter power sharing in Northern Ireland, a fundamental problem. Would you just confirm to the House, if there is no Stormont, will there be a Stormont break? <laughs> uh, if there is, uh, without st this break cannot even start to be a thing until Stormont goes back and the, uh, the executive functions. In truth, the result of today's vote was never in much doubt. The eyes to the right, 515. The nose to the left, 29. Just 29 voting against the government, though, was a major relief. The fear was that it could have been as many as 30 Conservative MPs alone, including Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, for whom former Brexit Spartan Steve Baker had this message this morning. You know, he's got a choice. He can be remembered for the great acts of statecraft that he achieved, or he can risk looking like a pound shop Nigel Farage, and I hope he choose to, chooses to be remembered as a statesman. Advice which was not heeded. The significance of today's rebellion turned out not to be the number, but the names. Big beasts of the Conservative Party, including two former Prime Ministers, another former leader, a former Home Secretary, and a former party chairman. Is former Prime Ministers voting against the current Prime Minister, it's a pretty big deal, isn't it? You'd have to ask them why they made the decision they did. My point is that that was an overwhelming majority of Conservative MPs from all wings of the party and with all sorts of uh, uh, views about Brexit. 22 Conservative MPs rebelled against the government here. What does that say about Rishi Sunak standing in the party? Well, I think it just carries on. I mean, you know, he's, he's Prime Minister, he's made his decisions. We happen to disagree on this matter, but on other matters we go along with the government. And on this matter, is that it? Is it, that's it, you just roll over now? Actually, as with all matters to do with the European Union, and all matters to do with the passing of laws, particularly regarding Northern Ireland, which goes back centuries, as one and other members today said, this is not the end of it. It's a point echoed by the silence of a shutdown Stormont. After years of Brexit and protocol paralysis, though, the Prime Minister will chalk today up as a win. And thanks to the small number of rebels, it's not just a numerical victory, but a symbolic victory too. Well, a short while ago, I spoke to the Northern Ireland Minister, Steve Baker, and I put it to him that the DUP's opposition to this deal means power sharing will not happen anytime soon. I didn't hear anyone argue that this wasn't a fantastic step forward for Northern Ireland. On, on, on a wide range of issues, this is a great step forward for Northern Ireland. Things like the supply of food into supermarkets, the Green Channel will sort out the stocking the shelves with the same range as in GB. But you're absolutely right, until the DUP agree to go back into Stormont and re restore devolved government, I absolutely will be on tenterhooks. 1.9 million people in Northern Ireland need stable devolved government. So how are you going to bring them round? Well, we're going to continue to talk to them. People will have heard uh, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson say that we continue to talk constructively with them. What can you offer them then, to bring them in? Because fundamentally the principle of sovereignty is not assault to them. Well, we have given them the storm on break legislation today, which we've carefully explained and we can, I can see they voted against it. But there are things we can do in UK legislation which will make absolutely clear how the UK government will behave. What I would say is 78% of Unionist voters by our polling support the Windsor framework. And, you know, I know there are very strident voices in Unionism who insist on the same high principles very often as my Eurosceptic colleagues and as, and as I have insisted on. But the crucial point is, as people appreciate, Northern Ireland is different. It's a post-conflict society with an open land circumstances and we have reduced these compromises to the absolute minimum necessary 
to keep that border open. I mean, you warned Boris Johnson would be a pound shot Nigel Farage this morning. Have you got 21 pound shot Nigel Farages in the Conservative? I absolutely would not say that. The reality is that most of those colleagues who went through and voted no are men and women of principle who have always stuck to the, their guns over the absolute commitment to sovereignty. And most of them will have been people who just weren't willing to compromise on the issue of the day. Forgive me, I haven't actually had a chance to check whether Boris actually went through the lobby, but I would want him to give his own reasons. But bearing in mind that he voted for the Chequers Agreement in the end, he brought forward the protocol. This is unarguably a massive improvement on the protocol. The protocol bill wouldn't have done what he's implied it would do. Indeed, the protocol bill would put in a red and a green channel just as this agreement does. And, um, uh, it, you know, it, it just, you put it all together and you just have to ask what he, what he thought he was achieving. The protocol bill doesn't have a legal basis now. If we tried to use it, it would have split the Tory party. It would have completely wrecked relations with the EU. These were things we were willing to risk in order to get the improvements we've delivered through the framework. Just fine then, because I know you've got to go. He's giving evidence right now in front of the Privileges Committee. Do you trust that committee? How important is it for the integrity of Parliament that you get this right? Well, it's vital uh, that this thing is, is, is got right, but it is a matter for the House, not for me as a government minister. And obviously, as a member of Parliament, I'll have a free vote like everybody else. But, you know, like, I should trust them. Well, look, I think any member of Parliament must trust the committees of the House of Commons. They must be as unimpeachable integrity and right all the things that, of course, the public will judge for themselves, whether that is always the case. But that must be our ambition for parliamentary committees. In the end, this is a democracy. Deserve to be well represented, and I'm sure you and I are united in our quest to try and improve the standard of government through these democratic systems. So, you know what? I'm going to choose to trust the committee. They need to do a good job. Steve Baker, thank you very much. You're welcome.